Hey guys, Dr. Sean Hashmi here with uh, Kaiser Permanente in Woodland Hills. So today I thought I'd talk to you guys briefly about uh, treatment options for membranous kidney disease. Now this is actually a very complex topic and certainly not enough time in one small video to talk about all of the things. But membranous kidney disease is one of the kidney diseases that presents itself with a lot of protein in the urine. So people will present to my office with leg swelling or even swelling extending all the way up, their arms may be swollen, their face may be puffy. And when we do a urine test, we find that they're spilling a lot of protein. Often as a consequence of that, they may have very high cholesterol to go with it. Their blood pressure may be elevated. So the thing about membranous is, what are the causes of it? Well, a lot of things we don't know. Infections can do it. Uh, viruses like hepatitis B, hepatitis C are associated with it. Cancers or solid tumors are associated with membranous disease as well, along with a host of other things. But there is something to remember about membranous, and this is what we call the rule of thirds. So what is that rule? Well, one third of the people who present with membranous will get better. One third kind of stay about the same, maybe progress a little bit, and one third will definitely worsen and go all the way to kidney failure. So when you think about treating membranous, you have to keep in mind that a third of these patients have the potential to just get better by themselves. So this is why we look at uh, patients with membranous disease and we see how bad is the disease. If it's mild, what we'll end up doing is we'll give them blood pressure control and the medicines we use for controlling blood pressure also lower the protein in the urine. Now, what are these medications? Now, these, if you remember from previous videos, are the angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors. Remember, they all end in pril, analopril, lisinopril, benazepril. We have aldosterone receptor antagonist, are the artan. So tell me, sartan, val sartan. These medications will lower the protein. Your doctor may also prescribe you spironolactone which is an aldosterone antagonist. And what that will do is also lower the protein. And with modern medicine, we have new medications coming out. One of them is aliscarin or tecturna that can also do similar things. So if the proteinuria isn't too bad, we'll start off as a first line with just blood pressure medications that lower the protein. Why is lowering protein so important? Because it will destroy the kidney if we don't lower the protein. Now the next step is somebody who has a lot of protein being spilled in the urine. What do we do for these people? We've already tried the ACE inhibitors, the ARBs, maybe something else on top. We're controlling that, but their protein is still a lot. Well, then we will start with steroids and cytotoxic agents. So these are the stuff that's designed to shut down your immune system, not completely, but to suppress it enough so that we can control the disease. So, the cytotoxic agents we use, there's a couple of them, but the majority or the major one we use is called cyclophosphamide, a common name for it, cytoxan. So we will give cytoxan and we will give prednisone. Oftentimes the regimen is given one month of cytoxan, alternate with one month of prednisone. But you have to be aware, these are very powerful agents and they have a lot of side effects and they must be used extremely carefully and you must understand all the different side effects that they can do. Another agent or line of agents that we use are called calcineurin inhibitors. The two that we have on the market right now is tacrolimus and is cyclosporin. These are the two. So tacrolimus or prograf, cyclosporin has a couple of names that goes by, gengraf is one of them. Um, these two agents can also be used with prednisone to treat some of the worst cases of membranous disease. Why is it so important to treat membranous disease? Because if left alone, one, there's a very high risk that it can progress. Remember, one third of the patients can progress. So if the proteinuria is very bad, we gotta try to save the kidneys. Two is it'll cause high blood pressure, it'll cause high cholesterol. There's a risk of blood clots, and there's a risk of infection with membranous disease. Because as you lose your protein, remember all your immune system, your antibodies, these are all protein. So you're losing all of that in your urine and making you more susceptible to infections, to blood clots. The things in your body that prevent the blood from clotting are also protein, and you're losing that in the urine, so your risk of having blood clots goes up. So, bottom line, treatment options for membranous kidney disease, start off with blood pressure control, 
with an ACE inhibitor, ARB. If it's very severe, then you have to add cytotoxic agents such as prednisone and cytoxin or calcinoin inhibitors and prednisone. Once again, this is Dr. Sean Hashmi with uh, Kaiser Permanente in Woodland Hills talking to you about treatment options for membranous kidney disease. Thanks for watching.